Hey, Steve here from Guitar Zoom, and if you're part of the Guitar Zoom community at all, you know we've been doing a series on home recording, how to do recording, and um, it's been going great. And hopefully, if if you're not in the Guitar Zoom community, you um, you might want to consider joining. And certainly, I would encourage anybody that's watching this video to get into writing and recording because it's a lot of fun and nowadays it's something that's fairly straightforward to do it doesn't necessarily cost a lot of money like it did back in the day when you know you had to go into a professional recording studio and that sort of thing but the point of this is is we've been talking about some basic recording elements but the one thing that still is an issue is the overall mixing and then the end result which we could call the mastering trying to kind of produce it and make it radio friendly or ready to go, uh, you know, for someone to listen to, that's a whole process. And what we need to understand is that, you know, maybe you're studying that sort of thing. You know, I love this kind of stuff, but it is a lifelong process to learn how to mix and or master, just like learning how to play guitar is just like anything is. And so understanding that creating music, writing music is very different than recording it which is still very different than mixing and mastering it. So there's a lot of elements to this, and I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of the, the people that I talk to are really into the creative aspect of being able to write and you know use electronic drums or virtual instruments or whatever it might be uh, to make some music, but they don't have the mixing and the mastering skills to get everything ready, which is what this video is about, is trying to give you some ideas of some things that you could do to save yourself time and still be able to come out with a, an amazing sounding product, okay? So let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. We're gonna to be looking at two products. They're both by a company called Isotope. Now I'm not getting paid to tell you about this or anything like that. I've been using Isotope stuff for a long time and I use a lot of different, different plugins. But what I wanted to do, Isotope just released Neutron 4, which is a mixing uh, pro program or plugin. And then they released Ozone 10, which is a mastering plugin. And I thought, what if I took one of my old collaborations and I stripped off everything that I did with it and I just added the plugins with no other plugins and no tweaking on my end other than maybe a volume change, which I'm going to show you. And that's it. Okay. So again, I'm not showing you this because I want you to run out and buy the products. Maybe you'll like them and you will. I'm just trying to show you an alternative to not having any skills of mixing or mastering and then getting lost in EQ and compression and things like that. Now, don't get me wrong. Learning those things is really important if that's what you want to do with your life. If you're interested in studying mixing and you want to learn about what plugins do like compression or EQ or you know different kinds of things like that, I think that's wonderful. But I know there's a lot of people out there that don't really have that interest. They'd rather do the creative aspect of writing it, getting it recorded, and then have some help getting it mixed and mastered. Okay, so that's what this is going to be about. So what I did was I took an old uh, collaboration that I did with some friends. Uh, it's called Heaven and Hell. It's by Black Sabbath. And I'm not going to be playing the whole song for you, but I am going to show you um, the individual parts and what impact these have. So what we're going to do right now is uh, let, let me just read these things. These are things I was thinking about right before I, um, I decided to make this video. So for instance, we know, as I just said, we know that learning how to mix and master takes as much time as anything else, learning how to play guitar. It's not something that you can just learn to do overnight and do it well. And again, if you're already learning how to do it, I think that's amazing. Or if you're already skilled at it, again, that's, that's amazing. Um, but maybe you're not, right? So let's go to these things. So maybe you're somebody who wants to create music and record it, but you don't want to have something that sounds subpar to listen to. Okay, and you don't have those mixing or mastering skills at this point. Okay, the next thing is maybe you want to create something, uh, you want to record it and you want to share it online. Maybe you want to share it in a community like the Guitar Zoom community uh, or on YouTube or something like that. But again, you don't want it to sound subpar and you don't have those skills or those skills are not up to uh, the level that you wish they were. Um, the next thing is, is that you maybe don't have time to learn all that stuff. Maybe you'd love to learn how to do, you know, mixing and mastering, but learning how to play guitar and writing stuff and recording is already enough and you you don't really have any more time than that. That's a completely legitimate thing. Uh, 
maybe you are learning how to mix and master, but at this point your skills just aren't up there and you don't want to wait to release your music until you're ready, you know, until you've got these skills. You want to make this stuff and have your friends or your family or online or something listen to it now, right? Or maybe this is the last thing. Maybe you already have mis mixing and mastering skills, but with something like what I'm going to show you today, especially Ozone 10 in that case, you might be able to use this to A, B to see how good your mixes are versus what the, what the software uh, suggests. So anyway, just to kind of get that out of the way. All right. So let's go ahead and switch down to here. Okay. So what I've got here is the tracks for Heaven and Hell. Okay. And it's a mess. And the reason is, is what I want you to notice is on all the tracks that I've got here, there are no plugins. There's nothing there. All of the levels are set to zero. And all of the panned, the, the, the panning is set to, to center. So it's just going to be chaos when I turn this on. I also want you to see that there's nothing over here on my master bus or my two bus. I don't have anything on there. Uh, I do have Insight here, which is a program that I use to check levels. That's all it does. It's just for checking levels. And I don't even have that engaged right now. So if I started playing you this song, um, this song has uh, Steve Grimmett on vocals from Grim Reaper. This has Nick Bocott from Grim Reaper on guitar. It has me on guitar. Um, it has Joel Stevenette on drums and Brian Hollenbeck on bass. And that's what we have here. And again, this was all pre-mixed before. I've released this. You may have seen the video before, but this is just stripped down. So again, I'm going to play it for you and it's going to sound pretty noisy, but here we go. Give you a little bit of Steve's vocal here. Sing me a song, you're a singer. Okay, so again, the point being is that it it's not mixed at all. These are just rough tracks. Nothing's done with them. They're just rough, and there they are. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this program by Isotope called Neutron, and this is the new one, Neutron 4, and I'm going to place an instance of that on each one of these tracks. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me get me out of the way there so you can see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my tracks here. Let me just run through what my tracks are. So I have drums, I have bass, I have Steve's main vocal, Steve's background vocal. I have Nick's rhythm, which I have in the center because his is a stereo track. Okay, and then I've got my two guitar parts, which ultimately will get panned. But for now, I've just got everything centered and and flat, okay? And then I've got Nick's solo, and I've got my solo, okay? And we can see by looking at these wave files that they're kind of all over the place. You know, some are bigger, and you know, some are smaller, that sort of thing. So the volumes are just all over the place. And I'm leaving it like that on, on purpose, just to show you what happens, you know, if you're doing some mixing and, uh, or you're doing some recording and you need some help with mixing. So all I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna select all my tracks here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to grab Neutron 4 here, and I'm going to drag it over. And what it's going to do is it's going to put it on all these tracks at the same time. So now we can see, whoop, let me get that out of the way. So now we can see that Neutron 4 has been added to all of these tracks. Okay? So we're going to go to the drums first here, and I'm going to solo up the drums, and I'm going to hit uh, the program here, open that so you can see it. Okay, and I'm going to name this drums just like it's labeled here. Okay, now with this, what you can do is you can do this one of two ways. Either you can work with this, which listens to the audio and tries to give you a, a great starting point. And that's what I'm going to be using today. Now you can actually switch over to the detailed view here. And when you're in the detailed view, you can set up all of these different things and you can do all of this yourself. Now again, this video is about simplicity, so I'm not going to be using the detailed view. What I'm going to do is come over to the assistant view and this is what I'm going to be using. Now, whoops, sorry about that. 
Uh, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the song here where things get a little bit faster. And you'll notice it's already listening to the drums. See that? And it's already building some tone shaping. And there we go. This is what we had before. And that's what we have now. Okay, I'm gonna get my face out of there because you don't need to be looking at me right now. So the point of this is I am not going to tweak this at all at this point. I'm assuming what my job is, maybe I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to make a mix really quick, or maybe again, I don't know a lot about mixing, so I'm not really gonna mess with this. So instead of doing any tweaking from this point, I'm just gonna, I'm done, okay? Now I'm gonna go over to the next thing, which is the bass, okay? And I'm gonna open that up, here's my bass. And again, I'm gonna name this bass, and I'm gonna show you why in just a little bit here. So again, instead of doing detailed view, I'm gonna come over here to the assistant view and I'm gonna play, move that back just a little bit there, and I'm gonna play some of the bass now. Okay? So, and again, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna leave it exactly like that. Now, I'm gonna take the solo off just so you can kind of hear what the end of this song sounds like where you're hearing these drums and bass parts and all this stuff. So, here it is. <laughs> So again, we're not, it's not mixed yet. What we're doing is we're basically just doing tone shaping at this point for each one of these tracks. So right here, I'm on Steve's main vocal and I could choose anything here, okay? I'm just gonna put the, the cursor right here so I can hear his voice. It's right there. So I'm gonna solo that up. There he is. So I'm going to open this. I'm gonna name this Steve Vocal. And again, I'm gonna go over here, play it. The world is full of kings and queens. Who blind your eyes and steal your dreams? It's heaven and hell. And the tail of your back is really white. The moon is just the sun at night. But when you walk in golden halls, you get to keep the gold. Okay, and again, that's all I'm going to do with it. Okay, the next one here is Steve's backing vocals. So we're just gonna call that background vox, like that. And I'm gonna get that out of the way just for a second here. So here we are, background vocals. So I'm gonna go right here, and just, again, so I have some audio to play through. You don't have to solo the channel or anything, but I'm just doing that to show you what's happening. So I'm gonna open up this instant of, instance of Neutron 4 here. Go right there, and I'm gonna press play. love his voice. All right, so now that's done. Again, I'm not making any tweaks. I'm literally just going through and letting Neutron choose my stuff, and I'm doing that because I want to show you what happens at the end. So when you get to guitar, this is kind of interesting. What I have noticed, now I'm on Nick's guitar part here. So I'm just going to go to the end right here again. All right, so I'm on Nick's guitar. I'm going to open this up and call it Nick G, okay. Now, when I do the assistant, watch what happens. I'm gonna play this. Now that sounds fine, okay? But what I found is if I move to distorted electric, listen to the difference between these two.
it seems like it's got a little more beef to it. So that isn't a, a tweak I made. I didn't have to, but I moved it to distorted electric instead of just guitar. Okay. And basically what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing on my tracks as well. So now I'm on my left channel, which again is centered for now, but I will be panning it back. Okay, so there I am. Okay, so I'm going to open this, call this Steve Guitar Left. Open that up. So we're ready to go on Assistant, and here we go. Okay, now you're going to notice it shows other. Okay, that's okay. I can move down to guitar, and now let's listen. So again, it just seems like it's going to cut through a bit better if I choose distorted electric. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this one. This is my this is guitar right. So I'm going to name that Steve Guitar Right. Do the same thing again here. Now, I wouldn't have to switch that, but again, for my ear, it just sounds a little more like I'd like it to. But, you know, maybe, maybe just leaving it would sound even better. And we're getting to the good stuff here in just a minute. You can see how quick we're going through this entire process. So Nick's solo here, okay, we've got to find his solo, which is right here. So again, I'm just moving over to save myself time here. So I'm going to open up Neutron 4. I'm going to solo Nick solo. We'll call this Nick solo right there. And here we go. <laughs> So again, switching it over to distorted, just, just cause. And now I'm going to go to my solo, which is back here or here, any of these. So I'm going to solo that up, open that up. This is going to be Steve solo. Go to the assistant view, play. <laughs> So now what I've done is I have just finished using Neutron 4 on all these channels, okay? And um, I haven't done any tweaking of anything other than I switched the guitar to distorted electric, right? That's all I did. Now I'm gonna close these up just to have a little more retail space here for you to see. Okay, so now we haven't mixed yet. We've just done some tone shaping with Neutron 4 simply by using the Mix Assistant. That's all we've done, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do an actual mix. So what we wanna do here is I'm gonna come over to my two bus or my master bus or main out or whatever you wanna call it, okay? And I'm gonna load up Neutron 4, just like I have on the other ones, okay? But instead of opening up the actual Neutron 4, I gotta find my stuff here. Oh, we'll go to favorites because I have it in here. With Neutron 4, you get this thing called visual, where are you? Why am I not seeing them? There it is, Neutron 4 Visual Mixer. That's what we want. So I'm gonna take this Neutron 4 Visual Mixer. You'll notice that Neutron 4 is what I put on all of these different uh, tracks. Well, now I'm going to take this Neutron 4 Visual Mixer, which comes with Neutron 4, and I'm putting it on my main out, okay? And there's a thing called Mix Assistant. So now if I click that Mix Assistant button, okay, it says quickly get your tracks ready to mix. Now this is the trick here is we have to understand that 
we recorded tracks. You would record tracks for your song, whatever. Maybe it's a couple guitar tracks and a vocal track or a drum track or a bass track or whatever. You record those tracks. The first thing that we just did with Neutron 4 is we use some tone shaping. That's all we did. Well, the levels are still all over the place, aren't they? Okay, that's what this mix assistant is going to do for us, is this mix assistant now. Uh, let me get my face out of here. What we're going to do is I'm going to hit begin and look at here. Remember I named all these drums, bass, Steve vocal, Steve solo. Uh, let's see, Steve vocal, background vocal. There's Nick's guitar, Nick's solo. So they're all here. So I'm going to choose all of these. Okay. And then notice over here, it shows, hey, you have a plugin on all of these, which I do because I just did all of that shaping. Okay. So it says, what do you want to focus on most? Well, I want to focus on vocal, okay? And the rest of it, I'm going to worry about less. I know I want Steve's vocal to be up in front and center more than everything else, and then I can adjust as needed at the end. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to hit begin listening, and what it wants to do is it wants to listen to the entire song. Now, I'm not going to make you sit through this whole thing. I'm going to run this, and then when I'm done, I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to sit through this whole time, okay? But here we go. So I'm going to press play, and I'm going to let it play all the way through the entire song. So here we go. All right, so the song is over. Now we can see here it says clicking go to results before your song has finished. Uh, playing can cause tracks to be ignored. So you, you play through the whole tune. Now I go to go to results. And now let's listen to the song now. Now, if you remember, okay, here we go. I'm going to bypass the assistant. That's what it sounded like. Now, now I'm going to move, move over to where Steve sings here so you can hear a little bit of the difference between the two. So I'm going to bypass and then I'm going to play it uh, with it engaged as well. Move over to where there's more stuff going on here. Oh, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So at this point, again, I'm not going to change anything about what's going on here. I'm going to leave this as it is and hit accept because I want to show you. Already, we've got, we've got a really great mix going. If once I hit accept, I'm going to see here that all of my different, there's bass, uh, background vocals, drums, they're all listed in here, and I can change the volumes of those if needed. So as I'm going through now, maybe I'd go to different parts of the song and listen and see if I feel like something needs to be a little bit louder. But to be honest, I can't quite make that decision just yet because I know that I've got three guitar parts in there, and if you remember me saying, I'm gonna move this out of the way just for a second here, that I wanna take this guitar right here, and I wanna move it left, and I wanna take this guitar, and I wanna move it to the right, because I want those panned. Now, it didn't do that, but I, I want that done, okay? So now, if I go back and listen, Now, when I recorded this, of course, I recorded it with the intention of having those two guitars panned left and right, and Nick's would be in the center. So now, as I listen, it sounds just fine. And if I wanted to raise the volumes, I could do one of two things. Either I could go over here and raise those volumes right here, or I could do that in the actual uh, Studio One as well.
But what I'm going to do, I just want to check this real quick because sometimes the solos are kind of hard to tell. So I'm going to go to Nick's solo here. Get that out of the way. And let's listen here. Now, I could bring the volume up here and it'd be just fine, but I, I'm going to just pull that up just a little bit so I'm going to find Nick's solo. Just bring that up a little bit. It's perfectly fine. Now I'm going to go to my solo, which is right here. Okay. Pull up mix, uh, this mix, mix assistant here in Visual Mixer. I'm going to find my solo right there. It goes up. move that up a little bit okay now again it isn't done but that sounds pretty good again if I go back to the way things were you know it sounded significantly different now I don't I don't know that I can turn this off here yeah, it's already integrated in there so you know I can remove it if I want to but the my point is is that you can see again we did some tone shaping in the beginning, which was literally just clicking on that button and allowing it to do its job. And then we used the visual mixer here uh, at the end. That's all we did, okay? This visual uh, assistant or visual mixer, mix assistant to adjust the volumes. So it's kind of done all of the work for us. Now that doesn't mean that you might not go back and maybe do some more tweaking from there. Maybe you want, you know, the guitar a little bit, you know, something in the mid range, or, and that's all fine. You can do anything. I'm just saying, if you want it bare minimum, very easy, we're already there. It did some ch tone shaping. It did the balancing for us, and you know, maybe we bring the volume of something up a little bit or or whatever. And again you know, with, with recording a lot of guitars, you're always panning guitars. And so the thing about the uh, visual mixer is that if, you're, if your tracks are mono, it doesn't allow you to pan those within the visual mixer. That's why I did it in Studio One, okay? So once it's all done, because visual mixer will tell you, make sure that all your levels are at zero, make sure that everything is centered, and then it listens to everything and it tries to set it up. And then once it's done, you can adjust the uh, volumes a little bit if you want to, and certainly, pan anything if needed. Uh, you can pan it in the Visual Mixer um, app or program if it's stereo, but if it's mono, it doesn't allow you to. So then I go back out to Studio One and I do it and I'm done. So here's the kicker for this whole thing, is now we've got this sound going, which sounds just fine. Okay. Okay, so all of that is going just fine. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add on Ozone 10. And watch this, this is pretty crazy. So we're gonna do Ozone 10, okay? And I'm just adding on actual Ozone 10 here. And here it is. So I open it up and it's sitting just like this. Okay, what I'm gonna do is come over here to the assistant view, and it wants to hear some music. So what I'm gonna give it is, again, the most impactful part of the song, not the most mellow part, but the most impactful, which is the end of the song here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start playing. Okay, you ready? So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to show you this again. I'm going to load up Ozone 10. Okay, so Ozone 10. Here we go. Head over here, and then I'm going to start playing the song. Keep the 
All right, so now if we look at this. He's really white. The moon is just a sunlight night. When you walk in Golden Hall, you get to keep Let's go back a little earlier. Less that you give, you're a taker. So it's all in You know, maybe I want those guitars just a little louder. All in all, tell it in hell. But we're there. Now, if you know anything about volume and what we call luffs and that sort of thing, here they are. So it's not a crazy volume or anything like that. So th the point is, is that this is pretty cool and you can see how quickly using Neutron on each track, I was able to shape some tone and then throwing that visual mixer, uh, mix assistant thing onto my, my master bus or my main out and then being able to adjust the levels with that. And then all I had to do is just some small things from there. And then once I added Ozone 10, all I did was add it and did the assist again and let it choose. Now, it, again, it might not be perfect. You might want to do some little things, but is it way better than it was when we first started? Obviously it is. And that's what I wanted to show you. So again, it's not like the plugins are free. They cost money. But if you think about it, certainly if you've ever worked in the industry before, if you had a song and you wanted to send it to someone to mix and then you wanted to send it to somebody else to master, you're going to spend this the, the amount, same amount of money by the time you're done anyway, right? Um, so again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn how to do these kinds of things. L having skills of mixing or mastering is amazing skills. But as I said before, sometimes we, we're not ready with those skills. Sometimes we don't have the time to develop those skills. And sometimes we, even if we have the skills, we don't have the time to be spending, you know, on certain projects. Maybe it's just easier to throw something like this on there, get it done and get it ready. And now all of a sudden here you are with a song that's mix ready, radio friendly, and ready to go out and do whatever you want with it. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. And um, I will put a link down there in whatever description or whatever it is for you to check this out. And again, I'm not making any money on this or anything like that. I always try and support companies that I think do really great work. These aren't the only plugins that I use. There's all kinds of different things that I, I enjoy, but I have found with the new um, Ozone and, and uh, Neutron that I can, as I've just shown you, I can get a really great mix very, very quickly which sometimes is really beneficial. So that's why I want to share this with you. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon, okay?